Yo, what's going on? Yes, what's going on, lad? Nothing, man. No work. It's Friday. You know, it's weekend off. What's going on, crop? What's going on, bro? Yeah, man. So we're gonna talk about it. which is the fastest car in the set of course of competizione as of right now. Because <clears throat> obviously we've got the new cars coming. We don't know what's that. What what that's gonna to bring to the table, but right now, um, the cars, the the balance is definitely for me between six cars: the Ferrari, the Bentley, Lexus, Audi, the Lambo, and the AMG. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, between them six cars, I would say for me that the other cars not competitive on a consistent enough basis to be put into that like, the top rank of cars. You know what I'm saying? But um. Mm. Yeah, he's still doing testing since the end of season one. Yeah, like, uh, we, you know, me, Chloe, a couple others, you as well, printer. We did like, um, did some laps around a few different tracks just to get like a, you know, a kind of gauge of where the cars were. But I still feel like, for instance, you know, when we talk about the fastest car, it depends on what what you what you base that on. If you base it on what car can do a lap quicker than any any other car, and that's it then obviously you, you look at like the Lamborghini, the Audi as the fastest, but when you're talking about like longer race distances, which car are you more likely not to make a mistake in? Which car do you feel more comfortable driving at, at your maximum? Do you know what I'm saying? Hmm. So like, I um, mean, go. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's very sort of like you were saying, it's very opinionated. Right. I mean, you have sort of cars that, stand out in certain tracks yeah you know the uh the lexus at silverstone is pretty good yeah as yeah, well yeah. the bentley round spa for example is pretty good in my opinion yeah yeah you know but in certain other tracks like tighter twistier tracks you know uh, struggle. Tends to struggle yeah, yeah you yeah. know what i'm saying so cars like the audi the lambo you know the the ferrari i mean you know, you're, you're you're more or less having an easier time, I guess, with it. Yeah. What what I would say as well is since that five point is it the five point tire model, since that model's come in, I think that the cars that would struggle a lot more over curves, where you see, like for instance, everyone knows a Lamborghini was a rapid car, but not that many people wanted to drive it and risk it. Do you know what I mean? Probably similar with the Audi. If you go back a couple months, a lot of people like the Audi. A lot of people like the Lambo in terms of how fast it is, but they were scared when it comes to like curbs and stuff. And I even remember like um, when we used to race at Hungaro Ring, let's go back like two months, two, three months. I used to always, mm. always pick the old Bentley just for the fact mm. I knew it probably wasn't the quickest over a lap, but I knew at the start of the race when the tires were still cold, I can hit the curbs as hard as I wanted to. And everybody else had to avoid it and sort of drive a little bit safe. And in that time you can, mm. you can open up a gap and win a race. You know what I mean? So like things like that, I think now with the five point tire model, I don't think are, are as big of a problem. Now I can see guys hammering curbs in other cars, and I think that's probably taken away the edge um, away from the Bentley. Because you remember, we definitely strongly thought the Bentley was the quickest. But I think the since, quickest, yeah. yeah, like over yeah. over race distance, I feel like the Bentley was the easiest to push, the easiest to hammer as hard as you wanted to, like most forgiving, and that's all the ingredients to make a car like super fast in race conditions. So I think since the that tire tire model we started to see like the Lambo and the Audi uh getting a lot more getting a lot more of a look in. I still think that a lot of people don't actually drive the Lambo that much, even though it's rapid. I think people are kind mm. of scared of that car a little bit because it's it's snappy. But um yeah. it's definitely up there. But first like I'm gonna sort of try and go in alphabetical order of the six cars that I got in the picture. First, I'm gonna try and talk about the Audi a little bit, because obviously the Audi, you, as you can see, this so far this um, season, like everyone seems to be 
so far there's a lot of people in the Audi, you know. So mm. um, I'm looking at it thinking uh, I'm expecting to see a lot of people sign up in Audi. Maybe it's because they know that the update's coming and the update's going to be bringing the new Audi, which people are going to get a free hit and be able to upgrade on the car. So um, maybe it's for that reason, but um, definitely seen a lot more Audis than we used to on the set. Mm. Mm. Like, why, why do you think, think? Why do you think people are taking taking to the Audi much more now? But why do I think that? Yeah. Uh, well, I think ever since the new tire model, it's sort of like mixed like the cars up a bit. It's like sort of thrown everything into the air a bit. Yeah. You know, like you know, there isn't really that standout car anymore. So the only sort of car that you're based on is sort of like all round the pace, should I say? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I reckon the, the, the Audi has that in a way as yeah. well. I mean, the Audi is very fast. You don't be wrong, isn't it? Yeah. But like in certain tracks, I'm guessing, because I, I remember, because I was in it last year. Yeah, you in last season. I think, yeah, um, tracks like Spa, and what else struggling around? I think Nurburgring was one of them as well. You know, it was sort of like like high curbs. I had to really avoid them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As well because it made it really sketchy. Yeah, that's actually that's actually what Crop was saying there. It's pretty mm. scary going through our Rouge in the Audi. I think like it was probably worse before that uh, the five point tire model because that's when El Rouge was like that was a scary corner. Even I did so much work on the Lambo to get it through that corner without too yeah. much problems, man. So much work. But um, yeah, that's that's like the, the thing I do like about Assetto is every car seems to have some sort of weakness. You know what I mean, mm. there's some sort of weakness with with every car. With the Lexus, you can say you can't really stand on the brakes. You can't brake as late as some of the other cars. With the yeah, Lambo, like once you once you lose it, you're gone. You know. Mm. And the Audi, obviously, the curb thing. And the only car, I would say, hasn't really got a standout weakness um, is probably, well, the Ferrari has. It's not really that fast down the straight, but it's kind of like, it's like a top five car everywhere you go, the Ferrari. Mm. Everywhere you go, it's a top five car. But It's because um, it has a nice balance, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, bringing it back to the Audi, like... Uh, it definitely is rapid, um, rapid in a straight line. It's got a nice front end. Obviously, you have that problem with the uh, the curbs as such. But um, obviously, with the new tire model, it's probably not as big of a problem, which is why you're seeing more people jumping at Audi now. It's, it's definitely got the speed. Um, but, you know, it's still a car that punishes mistakes. And that's yeah. where I think, where I often used to think people that drove the Bentley was sort of getting an easy ride. Like the 2018 Bentley, like, cornering, for such a big car, the cornering was insane. Yeah. Fast corners in this car were insane. And I, I still feel like in the race, I can just push this car without even, without even think, yeah, I, I never think I'm about to bin it in this car. I never, ever feel like I'm generally going to make a mistake. Where sometimes, mm. if, if you watch a lot of the races from last season, there's at least... You see, in every race, at some point, I will have like a massive sideways moment. Every single race, no matter what track we did, every race, mm. I knew it was coming, and I almost used to like prepare my mind that I knew this was going to happen. So I know I have to sort of be ready to catch the car at some stage. I'd never feel like that in the Bentley, never. Do you know what I mean? And I know it's probably not the the fastest like one lap pace car, but in a race, the car's solid. Yeah, you know what I mean, I mean, for me though, uh. When I drove it, because I'm, I'm, I mean, a lot of people, I mean, it's a very easy car to drive. Yeah. And I don't really like, you know, I like a car, that, you know, you can put a lot of, you know, that takes a lot of input, if you get what I mean. Yeah. And obviously the Bentley, you don't really, you don't really need much of that because the car does all the work for you. You're not having to avoid uh, yeah, yeah. having to take, uh, you know, a corner entry different compared to the Bentley where you can really smash it. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, smash through apexes and not having to worry about the repercussions of it. Yeah, you know, it's like for me, like, like I'm not very fast in it because I don't drive it at all and I don't really like how it drives for me and how you know you're yeah, on the you right like, side. You like the challenge. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I think not... with the Bentley, when you know when the game first came out, the first release date, when all the cars got released, I felt like if you learn to play the game in the Bentley, in the long run, you were messing yourself up. 
because it was literally the only car you could get away with driving a certain way. It's the only car you could smash curbs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Throw it into corners. It was the only car you could really do that without really seeing, getting a penalty from it. And I feel like people that jumped into the game and learned how to drive the game in the Bentley, when they got in, mm. when they get into anything else, they're gonna struggle. You know mm. what I mean? Because you you can't even you can't even hit the curves the same. Even now, even though the time models change, even now still, I would say you can't really hit curbs the way you can in the Bentley. Do you know what I mean? So um, mm. yeah, it's just one of them things. But again, it's a, I wouldn't say it's an all round the car because at Mazzano it's not that strong. Um. I still feel like over over one lap it probably lacks a bit of pace. It's not particularly fast in a straight line, but mm. the corner speed and the brakes are insane on the Bentley. Though. The balance yeah. for such a for such a big heavy car, the balance is crazy. You know what I mean? Mm. So um, I still think like the Bentley's definitely up there, man. It's definitely like I think it's definitely one of the top three cars on the game. If you're doing the championship, and you know. Especially if you're in AOR where you've got so many fast people and really consistency is the main thing that's going to get you anywhere near the front in AOR. I feel like a Bentley is a car that you're just not going to crash. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, yeah. I, still, I, mean, I still rate the even Bentley. Even with setup as well, Yeah, you don't really need to drive it fast. I mean, a lot of these fast guys, um, yeah. they don't really know. They don't really necessarily have to set up the car to be yeah. fast. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it's all pretty much done, and I find it very hard to set up that car as well because of that. I, I did, yeah. I did struggle a little bit with the Bentley setting up because I didn't know what to change because it felt okay already. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I'm someone in my mind. I'm always programmed to. I need to change something to make this go faster. You know what I mean, you can't. You can never just settle and think, yeah, this is good enough. You know what I mean? You have to try and find the the limit, like how fast can you possibly get this car. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. I've ne- I never felt like I, you know, in setups, I never felt like I, I really found something. Like I felt like I found something in the Lamborghini. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a weird one. But yeah. moving on, I'll say let's go on to the Ferrari next. Um, we talked about it a little bit earlier. And this is yeah. Ferrari's a weird one for me, man. Because for me personally, yeah, mm. like, <laughs> like I have a love-hate like- relationship, man. Mm. Honestly. It's weird. Chloe, you run default setup through through all the season. I, I can't do that, man. I'm just programmed to change stuff. I cannot help myself. You know what I mean? I will, I'm so bad that I will get in a car and I'll change stuff and I ain't, I ain't driven a lap. You know what I mean? I'm already changing stuff before I've even driven a lap. You know what I mean? I guarantee when Zandvoort comes out and the new cars come out, I'll be changing stuff before I even get out on the track. It's just, it's just programmed into my mind. But um, Ferrari, like, yeah, I've got a love-hate relationship with it because I feel like it's, like, I don't know, I think it's, like, the force feedback's weird or something. Like, it's just too light. Like, why is the mm. force feedback so light? I end up going in there and just turning the cast angles right up because it just <laughs> it feels, like, it's just super light to me. I don't know what it is. It's weird. Yeah. But um, I acknowledge that it's fast. I've seen, uh, what's it, Rats? I think his name's Samuel Frank. Rats. Yeah, Frankie, Frankie was doing bits in it as well. I seen Raps yeah. go like fast in it, and like it's it's there. It's one of them cars that it's it's always gonna be a top five car. As I said, it doesn't really particularly have a circuit where it's just downright terrible. You know what I mean, yeah. So um, that's where I feel like that's where the the plus point comes with the Ferrari. It's not bad anywhere, but I wouldn't say it's particularly stands out anywhere either. Mm. And I think, in my opinion, it's probably the best looking car as well. Best looking car. <laughs> mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I kind of like the headlamp. Well, the uh, headlight, sorry. Best yeah, looking car. Like yeah, it's, just, it's, it's a very sleek looking car for me. I, I mean, like it's, it's pretty. Well. I'll give it that. It's pretty. But I don't know, you know, I don't know if it's the best looking out here. Yeah, you know I what I mean? You know what I'm gonna say? What am I gonna say? Yeah. Bentley. <laughs> Bentley. I no, I like, I like I like the back of the Bentley, innit? That's what it is. I like the Bentley just looks mean to me. Yeah, Crop mm. says it's striking, but in my opinion, not pretty. Yeah, man, it's not pretty. 
Yeah, I, I mean, like it though, man. It's got a little smile on its face and everything. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I um, what I, actually, I don't even know what car I think is the prettiest car on here. Maybe when the new cars come out, I'm definitely gonna say, um, I'm definitely gonna say probably the 720s. But um, that that car looks that car don't even it looks like a GT1. It doesn't even look like a GT3. But um, yeah, the Ferrari definitely a uh, a good car. I'm not so sure that it's got the outright pace to probably mm. compete at the front, like right at the front, especially in quali. But I think in a race, I believe it's got good tire wear. It's got good fuel consumption. So I believe in in a race, it's probably a better race car than it is a qualifying car. Clarence. Yeah. Yeah. Shaggy Dan saying it struggles to pass, which is which is true. But I feel like the, the same thing can go for the the Bentley. The Bentley's not the greatest down the straight. But you know, it's it's a car that just works around most tracks as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like what uh, Chloe said there. Ferrari not a race winning car, but definitely a league winner. <laughs> so yeah. it's it's one of them cars. Cons- yeah, exactly. And that's that's what it's all about. And that's why the question is like, do you base a fastest car on lap time, or do you base it on how how you get in your lap time? Because I've seen loads of people like jump in a Lambo, be rapid, but then when it comes to the race, it's a struggle to keep the car on the track because it's like just a harder car to drive. But then if you if you feel like you can drive at your maximum in something that's a little bit slower, are you better off? Mm. Yeah, I mean it's sort of like the comparison between Mercedes and Ferrari and F1. Right now, Ferrari seem to have the beans in qualifying, but in the race. The Mercedes is definitely the more consistent car. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. Let's, uh, we'll move on to the Lambo, which is one of my favorites, what I drove last season. And, I mean, if you haven't got a great setup for the Lambo, then, boy, you're, you, you're going to be in for a tough race. But um, the Lambo's rapid. There's no doubt about it, man. We, I'll go back to that Paul Ricard race where... The straight line was crazy. And like, uh, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. A straight line was crazy in that race. I was gaining on you guys down the straight from so far back. It was insane. But at the same Jay. time, at the same time, I had Jardia behind me in the Bentley, which was way slower down the straights. But he was on me the whole way because of how much how much more he could push it through the corners. Because I'm... I'm getting to the corner after the straights, the, the, that, uh, the last section, and I'm holding on for dear life. Do you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, it's, it's crazy. No, Shaggy Dan, actually, around, um, around Paul Ricard, it's the McLaren is a beast down the street. You know what yeah. I mean? I don't know what Noble did to that thing. In fact, I do know what he did. I just don't know how he managed to have the setup to carry it the whole way around. But I'm telling you, yeah. that McLaren is rapid down that straight. It's crazy. He was getting off on everyone. You know what I mean? It's like it doesn't. It's like it doesn't even top out or something. It's it's weird. I I I think. Well, I I, gain, I gather that is the McLaren's acceleration that holds it back down the straights. And obviously, you you start accelerating way before you actually get to the straight coming out of the previous tight corner. So it's already up to a decent amount of speed, and it just keeps on going and going and going and climbing. Man, that car's fast down that straight. It's fast on that track, but. I just don't know how to drive it. But anyway, the Lambo. Yeah, I feel like great car. I love the Lambo. I figured out how to set it up. But generally, a lot of people struggle in this car. And that's why you don't, you don't see much people pick it. It's weird. If you look at AOR time trials, everyone knows the Lambo guineas quick. How many people did their time trial on the Lambo? Hardly no one. I don't see any pictures of a Lambo. You know what I mean? And I've I've lapped the Lambo similar, just like a tenth off the Audi around there, but I just know that it's a lot easier to bin. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, a lot of people think the Lambo's the quickest, but how can a car be the quickest when it's such an edgy car to drive? You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. yeah. I hear you. Mm. I, I think, mean, the Lambo is very quick. Yeah, yeah. You know? I like it around Hungary yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. But I think for me, yeah, I mean, I used to drive it on project cars too as right. well. But when I came over here onto a set of Corsa and tried it, you know, 
Mm. I didn't really how didn't really like how it was like in the race. Right, right. As well, because it was just too too sketchy, especially when you're sort of like coming through. Uh, what's it that fast right hander? Yeah. Um, God. <laughs> I mean, I, I I struggled with that for ages as well. But I, as I said yeah. before, I said it loads of times when I streamed before. The trick that so, I found with the Lamborghini is definitely the ride height. Don't don't put rake on the car, man. Do not put. Basically, just just keep the car as flat as possible, and you'll be able to make it around fast corners. If you don't, you're gonna bid it instantly, and that's pretty much. Once I found out about the Lambo, it made everything a lot easier. I still had a lot of sketchy moments, but um, it was still, yeah, still still an edgy car. But I made it safe enough to drive it fast enough. Um, yeah, it's a car that I like. It's a car. I think a lot of people like the Lambo, but people just just think that the car is just sketchy, and that's why you just don't see that many people in it. Um, but yeah, it's it's up there. If you can figure out a setup for the Lambo, it's you could arguably say it's quickest, or you know, depending on who you are. I see Hassini was doing pretty fine with it at um at Mizano. He was flying, so yeah, mm. it's it's up there. But um, move on to the Lexus, the car you've been uh the car driving. you've been driving. So I let you take it away with the Lexus because I don't really drive it that much. Well, for me, yeah. I mean, the Lexus is a nice car to drive. It's an all-rounder. It's it's sort of like a low-key all-rounder in a way. Right. Because the only sort of issue that I face with it is the car and the braking in the race. Yeah. I mean, I don't get it as much in qualifying, but it's somehow that, you know, when you add weight to it or add fuel to it, obviously, you know, the car just feels more sketchy under braking. Right. You know? I mean, the way I sort of adjusted it as well is just sort of like, you know, just ride height, right, so, right? Similar to what you were saying. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Because it's, like, I think it's got the the ride height on the rear is like crazy high for the uh, yeah. the Lexus, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I, I I kept on sort of messing around with it, like low in the rear, mm. and sort of raising it just just in case. It come okay. to the fact that I wasn't running, you know, or the car was too high up. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Rear. So what I just done is I just sort of like you know. Just lower the rear height, the rear ride height, add more wing to give it a bit more grip as well. Because it does slide around the corners, especially right, right. around Nurburgring. I mean, the Schumacher S's are good, but like, you know, coming sort of towards, you know, the uh, the long, just after the Schumacher S's, you've got the left and then the right. Yeah, hand yeah, there. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just got understeer there, man. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a pretty quick car around Nurburgring, and obviously, mm. different cars have different BOPs for. A certain track so that's why you get for instance the mercedes doesn't seem that great around uh paul ricard whereas at spa it's rapid you know what i mean let's mm. not forget the sro event the mercedes got pole like it clearly has speed but then you yeah. saw then you saw the um what it's like racing the bentley in a race when the bentley's just steady all the way through and it got absolutely destroyed so um it shows how how important it is to have a car yeah. that's fast in the race. But the Lexus, as as I know, like when we did the we did the the that AOR driver swap race, and we had the Lexus oh, yeah. flying around Silverstone. But <laughs> I'm telling you, the yeah. breaking into some of the tight corners was it was crazy because that then but then we didn't really know about the the ride height, how how mm. important it was. Like just a few clicks this way or that way can really upset the balance when you hit the brakes, and. I was struggling big time. You were struggling definitely less. But for me, hitting the brakes, Jesus, I was struggling big time. Yeah, because you're having to brake earlier. And that's the most frustrating thing because knowing that you can brake later yeah, and you've got people behind you, you're having to brake early and you lose so much. And it's, you know, it's a joke. It's yeah, a yeah. Fair. Sometimes because I feel like the front, the front end's just, you know, bouncing up and down quite a lot. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And that's what, I, that's what I've been facing. But what I did is I did, um, I put the brake power down as right. well. Right, right, that, right. Somehow, that actually, uh, that actually helped as well with that. After a while, for like you know, you know race distances. Yeah, I tell you, what, I tell you what, I would like to do one day. One when we've all got time is one day. I know, like for instance, like Voodoo does a lot of the, uh, you know, when he tunes cars, he uses the apps and stuff. I'd like to, you know, like make a perfect setup for every car on every track. And see where the 
the actual outright potential, like how fast you can get a car, how stable you can get a car, and see like how close is the BOP. I actually think the BOP is not that bad for the sort of top top um, tier cars. I think mm-hmm. cars like the M6, um, the McLaren, they need to sort of be pushed push forward. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't like having a whole tier like to have to tier cars because I feel like if you bring a game out, why are you not doing the BOP yourself to keep the cars as close, as close as possible? Then people can drive what they want. You shouldn't be punished by wanting to drive an M6 or a bloody GTR. I'm saying that Noble's flying in the GTR, but that's more about the driver, less about the car, if you know what I'm saying. But um, yeah. I feel like they they need to... Just be a Peter game. So I know they're trying to keep it as realistic as possible, but what is the point in the NSX right now? There's no point in that car whatsoever. You know what I mean? It's, it's just got no power. It's not even in the same league or category at the moment. So it's, it's kind of pointless to have it there. So I feel like they sh- you shouldn't just waste time on cars just for the sake of having cars in the game. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like certain cars need to be given a push forward. I hope with this new update that we get, that they do push the other cars forward. But um, yeah. I think there needs to be a, a, a better balance. But as I said, I'm I'm happy with um I'm happy with cars that are good at one track and not great around another track as long as it balances itself out for the whole season. Do you know what I mean? But if there's like if the the uh, update comes out with the new cars and you've got the McLaren seven two and it's just rapid everywhere, it kind of just kills the whole the vibe. vibe. You know what I mean? It kills yeah. the whole vibe because you know where everyone's gonna jump in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I, I hate that. Like, I was, Ooh. honestly, I was thinking about running the Audi this season. I've seen so many people in the Audi that it will probably make me change my mind on what I want to pick because I just like to see a bit more diversity. I don't, I don't believe in, oh, let's, let me run the same as everybody else so I've got the same chance of winning. I like to do something different, do you know what I mean? But, um, yeah. 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 Anyway, we'll That's move on to I the... Saying, yeah, yeah. Going, going yeah, yeah. I, I tend to change car every season no matter what game I'm on. I change car every season. But um, yeah, yeah, let me move on to the Mercedes, which I think is the last car I want to talk about. And I ain't going to lie, I can't drive this car that, that great. I can drive it good around some circuits, other circuits, I just don't know what I'm doing. Mainly because the setup's so tough. And um, that's that's probably one of the biggest, biggest struggling points with the Mercedes is people just don't know how to set the car up. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not an easy car to set up, but it's quick. But... I can't unlock the pace. I've seen other people unlock the pace. I was just watching a video today of guys doing like 16 twos around Spa. Do you know what I mean? I'm thinking, wow. I, the fastest I've been around Spa in the, in, the, in the AMG is like 17, like a low 17. I don't know how they're getting 16 twos in there. Do you know what I mean? But, you know, for some people it's fast. For other people, it's like, nah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 2 minutes 17, 2 minutes 17. It's yeah. not great, not terrible. That's what I mean. Like, if you look at the SRO, I know they always run like cold temperatures and that, but didn't Tamala get like a two minute 15 something? He got pole in front of all the Bentleys. Do you know what I mean? He destroyed it, innit? Yeah. And then the race came and he died. Do you know what I mean? So it's, I, I don't know, man. If you look, look, look at last season when um, AOR, we had the, the time trial hot stint. No, not hot stint event. It was, um, damn it. It was Super Bowl, the Super Bowl event. I'm pretty sure the fastest times were set by an AMG. And you wouldn't particularly look at Mazana and think, yeah, that stands out as an AMG track. But again, it's it's not really bad, particularly bad at, at anything, especially on a mid, mid-speed sort of track like that. Hasn't got super long straights. It's fast enough around the corners. It's curb compliant. The only thing I used to struggle with is when you put your foot down, the back end is larry. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So, yeah. Hey, it's the only car with a front splitter. You can adjust the front wing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. That's what puts me off. Mm. That's what puts me off because I don't know how, like, um, I don't know how much of the balance you can mess with. I don't know if you can put five on the front wing on a let, I mean, like 11 on the front wing on five on the rear. You know what I mean? In my head, that, that doesn't shout, that doesn't say to me, oh, this car seems as if it's going to be balanced. Do you know what I mean? But I've seen setups where people have got that and I'm thinking, does that really work? What about the downforce? It's a, a confusing car to me, but some people are fast in this car. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, 
yeah, I'm 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 baffled when it comes to the AMG. I don't know. I don't really know where I stand because when I drive it, I can openly say I ain't got the pace. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. Really drive it as much yeah, that's it. Fair. I don't, I don't drive it either. You know what I mean, I no. mean, it's never really sort of pointed towards any really Mercedes. Yeah, game for some funny reason, but you know, it's another one anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think most people, most people in the chat are even saying they they struggle with this car. But yeah. you know, as I said, who was it that um, what's that guy's name? Uh, what was that guy's name? There was a guy, I can't remember the guy's name, who got the fastest time in the in the Super Bowl. Um, and I think for the season, he switched to the Lambo and he just completely struggled. I was thinking, how? Hey. Um, what was his name? Um, what, AOR? Yeah, AOR, he got the fastest time. I think him and Chloe got the joint oh, like fastest team. time. Yeah, it, it was, T. Team, yeah, yeah, it began with a uh, T. I can't remember what his name was. Um, but yeah, it's... It's going to bug me now. I know. <laughs> Is it Tarin, uh, Tarin, Tarin something or Tarin? Nah, it was um. Oh damn it! Come on, some of you guys must know. What was that guy's name? Tarquin or something. You got yeah, Trank, Trank. That was it. Trank. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, Trank. Trank. Yeah, 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 yeah. He got a super got fast time. You know I mean, yeah. So, I mean, it's a fast car. I just can't drive it. You know what I mean, but it's just, it just, it just depends, man. It just depends on what type of car. What type of car you find easy to drive? Now, if you put like Jardier in most of these cars, then he's going to be able to extract the pace and be comfortable driving it. But when I watched Jardier drive, he looked very comfortable in the Bentley, like it was like super yeah. easy. Do you know what I mean? And he was able to be competitive, even at tracks where, for instance, like, um, like Paul Ricard. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mine, well, no one had Noble's pace on the day, but me, you, Hassini, I think rats in the Ferrari, we were all lapping very similar. We were all in different cars. Do you know what I mean? But eventually yeah. we saw the Mercedes definitely fell off in that race. Definitely. And that's what I wanted to talk about as well is like not, not 15, 20 minute races because in 15, 20 minute races, you can just ring a car and just do what you want. Do you know what I mean? Without the car falling away too much. But when, when we're doing these hour long races, or we're we're doing like pit stops and stuff like that. That's where you're getting to see that car's true race potential, race long potential. And that's why last season, in my mind, I thought the Bentley was the best. Yeah. Because over that race distance, it just seemed like it just did not fall off. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Even the fuel as well. Yeah, you yeah. Know, it had a it had a bigger tank. Yeah, and that's uh, that's what Spaggy Dan was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I heard uh, who's it that saying? I think it was Obitor said something about how on heavy fuel the the AMG is terrible. You know what I mean? Mm. You know what I mean? On on full fuel the AMG doesn't doesn't handle well. So, but again, that's something I I think I've only used the AMG once in a proper race once. You know what I mean? And that's that's about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, I've, do you know? I tell a lie actually. It was a special event uh, for yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, Speed event, or something like. That. Mm. Used it around Nurburgring. It was nice around there. You know, I was using it on default though, so you know, yeah, it's good. To drive. It's not for me, I guess. Yeah, Shagden saying that the um the AMG burns like 0.5 liters more per lap than any other car on every track. That's crazy. I mean, that yeah. means that um that means that you're regarding like longer races that you're fuel saving, so you can't even. You can't even drive to your limits. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Let me read up Voodoo said um, about BOP. Kuna has clearly said that they don't look for balance in the game, but they try to translate the real life cars as closely as possible, even though that means having a lousy NSX or similar. Yeah, I understand that, man. I understand that. Obviously, it's a blong pain game, so they're, they're keeping it as realistic as possible. But at the same time, it's like the NSX. I think because what you got to remember is it, it depends what teams actually run these cars in Blanc Pain as well. If you get like a, a amateur crappy team or a team that's not that successful running a car, and it's the only car in the whole, it's the only NSX in the um, in Blanc Pain, then they're gonna give it a crap BOP. If you had a better team or more experienced team running it, they might be able to find some time in the car. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
So you, mm. have, you have to look at it like that. That might not actually be the car's true potential. It's just the potential that that team showed in them races in Blanc Paint. You know what I mean? Yeah. But hopefully we get, you know, because if, if you look at the McLaren 720S in Blanc Paint, I haven't watched Blanc Paint Asia too much this season, but the races that I watched of it, McLaren weren't doing nothing. So it could, it could possibly come in a game and be just as crap as the other one. Do you know what I mean? So, hopefully, hopefully it's not. Do you know what I mean? Fingers crossed. Yeah. Crossed. What do you think about David Perel coming to a set of courses as well? Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> nah, man, it's good, man. It's good. It's good to get, like, more actual drivers on it. Do you know what I mean? And see, see yeah. how, see what time. I'm, I'm assuming he will be jumping in a Ferrari. See what times he can get out of it and stuff. Obviously, he's someone who's actively sim racing. Do you know what I mean? So I expect him to be pretty fast. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, man. Like, um, I didn't. I didn't so, watch. I didn't watch no British British GT. So I don't. I don't even know what the seven twenty S has been doing. I just seen it. I think he was in was it Blanc Pain Asia. I see it. Yeah. Um, I've seen it in another race. I think it was around Dubai and it wasn't really standing out. I was kind of shocked. But again, a lot of that just depends on who's running the bloody car. You tried getting him into AOR. Yeah, man. That's what you got to do. That's what, like, I always do it, man. If I come across anybody quick, I just try and get him into AOR. Instant. It's, it's just better for everyone. You know what I mean? It just, it looks like a better competition when you're running it. Like people have like people who've got like a certain name and they come to AOR, it's it's good for everyone. Cause as I said before, like AOR has made so many people. When I see all these YouTubers that are doing like rather well in their careers now and they got thousands and thousands of subs. All these guys came through AOR. All of them. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, man, it's pretty cool. And the knees, man. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, um if we're talking about like going back to the subject that matter, if we're talking about like cars in the race, like what what would you say? Um out of the out of the six cars, Ferrari, Bentley, Lexus, Audi, um, Lambo and the uh, AMG, which one would you mm. say is probably the weakest over a long race distance? I would probably say it's probably the AMG, if I was to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, to be fair, I mean, I can't really judge on the AMG as much because I haven't, <clears throat> excuse me, I haven't really driven it as much. Right, right. I think for me, if it's going to be a long distance race, mm. I'd have to say the Ferrari. What do you, you think? Know, and the Ferrari's weak. Well, weak or just like unstable. Right, right, right. No, so if it, if we're talking about weakness, then it's then it's definitely the AMG. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we talk about stability. Yeah, stability. I, I don't think I. You know what? You know what? You know what tipped me over the edge? Um, and this was the the SRO event. If a man can get pole, and you know Tamala is not no, he's not like a any driver, not like a just a time trial. That guy is fast on every single game he gets on every game. You know what I mean? He's an experienced esports driver, whatever. And I saw him just completely just from the first lap, just backwards at Spa, considering he got pole to go backwards that quickly. It's like, wow. I mean, this car, you can tell it, it just it hasn't got it in the race, man. It has not got it. Even like, mm. even if you look at um, Hassini, I know that Paul Ricard's not the best track for it, but when we eventually passed him, how quickly did he fall into the clutches of Jardier and rats and stuff and just completely just fell away? And Hassini, we've seen he's a, he's a fast guy. You know what I mean? It just yeah, seems yeah, like that cool. car, once it loses its, you know, loses that little bit of grip, it's done. It's finished. Plus the fuel situation on top of that as well. So I would say, yeah, definitely the AMG's out of there. Five cars <laughs> left. Five cars left um, between the Ferrari, Bentley, Lexus, Audi, Lambo, and a lot of this might You'd have be. To say Lexus. Yeah, a lot of <laughs> it might be Lex track compliant as well, depending on what track you're at as well. But um, yeah, 
I, I, I struggle in a Lexus anyway, to be honest. Mm. I'm going to read some of the comments quickly. Um, where are we? The, <laughs> Morphe, the Jag, the best for season two. I'm staying far away from that Jag, to be fair. It's a nice car. I, I like it. It's, it's it's the best sounding car by a country mile on the game. There's not even it's not yes. even an argument. That car just sounds like a beast. 2019 Ferrari got a BOP update. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, so, yeah. We know the Bentley struggles at tire tracks. It was. I didn't think I tried it around a uh, Misano. I didn't think it was that great. You know what I mean? But I think the thing, the thing that helps in the Bentley's you can just drive it aggressively all the time do you know what I mean and sometimes sometimes in like parts of the race where like for instance I, I know you're the same printer when I'm driving yeah. when I'm driving uh, the Lambo when it, when it gets to a certain like say like 25 minutes in half an hour in I am playing with so much things brake balance traction ABS, mm. I'm playing with everything to to stabilize the car because I know once it gets a little way in, you got to start messing around with the balance. One lap, you might need to put your brake bias to the rear. Another lap, you might need to put your brake bias to the front. It just depends how the car's feeling on that lap. And I find that's the only way to fully stabilize a uh, stabilize the um the the Lambo. But with the Bentley, I don't even think about doing that stuff. I'm just driving. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like those things are contributing factor to why i always thought like the bentley was the best car but um obviously as i said with a five point model now i think things have slightly changed do you know what i mean so i would probably say yes the lexus out of all of them is probably the next weakest only because it struggles so much on the brakes Break. yeah what would you say is the next one then or um uh, oh, this is tough. It's tough. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's tough. When you get tough. down to the last four cars, the Ferrari, Bentley, Audi, and Lambo, it is tough. I would, I would, me personally, I'm going to say the Ferrari. Only because I, I think it, I, I can't decide between, like, okay, let's decide this. What is the fastest car between the Ferrari and the Bentley? And we're talking about pure lap time. What, what car has the, more capability of getting a faster lap time on the majority of tracks. The Bentley. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I slight, I've, I'm talking, I, I can only think in my mind, yeah. I would say the Bentley is slightly better. And then mm. add to that the, the curb compliance, I just feel yeah. like the Bentley is a better car than the Ferrari. But then you can say, all oh, the Ferrari's very good on tyres and you know, it's got good fuel consumption and stuff like that. But I just feel like the Bentley's easier car to push 24-7. So I wouldn't say the Ferrari's particularly bad. I mean, they've got a lot of the, lot of similar traits. They've both got a nice front end. They're both not that great down the straight. But I feel like the Bentley's a little bit more forgiving. So, um, yeah, I, I just, I, I'd say that the Ferrari's next week. It's not that I think that's, it's that yeah. much weaker, but, um, after that, we're just down to the Bentley, the Lambo, the Audi. Top three. The top three. So, um, hmm. I'm actually going to say, yeah, Don't. out of these, I I'm not judging this on speed. I'm judging this on, from what I've seen with my own race eyes. Pace. Yeah, not, I wouldn't even say race pace. I I'm just going to say, I'm just going to talk for the majority. I think that the Lambo is weaker in a race than the Bentley and the Audi just because of how easy it is to bin. And I, cause I see so many people bin it yeah. in my mind. I just think that like, unless you've got that set up, like you're going to struggle. And like, as I said, if you look at the, you know, we had the, the, the hot stint for the qualifying for AOR, you know what I mean? And you know, how many Lambos did you see in that hot stint? You know what I mean? I don't, I don't think I, I, don't, I don't think I saw one. Nobody was driving a Lambo for the same reason as after five or six laps and them tires start going, it is so hard to control. Because I tried it. I tried the Lambo because I already had a setup there. I'd done 
I've done loads of videos for Brands Hatch in all of the GT3s pretty much. And you can get the same time you can get in the Audi and the Lambo. But in the Audi, you can continue to get good times. Whereas in the in the um, Lambo, it dies. And when it dies, it's dead. It's gone. Like you're losing a good eight temps. You know what I mean? Per lap. Yeah, yeah, per lap. And that's, that's the issue. You know what I mean? And I think it's got a lot to do with the ride height. So if you want to run the Lambo, make sure you keep that ride height. 56, 56, or at the max, 57 at the rear. And you should be better. But um, I think the Bentley is a better car in the race. And you're less likely to bin it. You know what I mean? Like, you ever been through maggots and beckets in a Lambo? Fucking hell. That is a scary stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, that straight, trying. yeah, the straight at the end of Paul Ricard, that right-hander, that corner at the end of um, the long straight at Paul Ricard, yo, that's a scary corner in a Lambo, man. Scary. You know what I mean? It's scary because when you turn in, you might just bin it, and it's scary if you hit the curb on the outside because it might just throw you all the way into the inside of the track. But... After that, we're down to two, the the Audi and the Bentley. And as of right now, as of right now, this moment, I think the Audi takes it. I think right now at this moment, I think the Audi takes it. And I, I'm only basing that off of the fact that I'm seeing everyone jump in, a, jump in an Audi now. Whereas if you, you look before, how many people were really jumping in Audis? You had a few specialists that you used to see, like the... Uh, Rodrigo, Eduardo, that we see in the hive mind server all the time, but yeah. as of right now, I think the Audi is is the car. Yeah, you know I mean, definitely. Yeah, Shaggy is saying it's kind of too bad that Audi is like the M6 in AOR PC2 at the moment. What do you mean, like a uh, like? Well, in in, in P cars two, the Audi was a great handling car. It was just too damn slow, so no one drove it. <laughs> Yeah, basically, the 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 Audi was the Audi was a great handling car on P cars too. It was just slow compared to the 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 Lambo and the other cars. So, what are you saying, Jar? What's Jardia in? He's gone to the Audi for this season. Is he? I think so. I'm not too sure. Is that what is that what you're saying, Chloe? He's in the Audi this season. Yeah. Uh, Voodoo says the Audi just keeps on killing me regardless of how much work I put in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of them cars, man. You hit a curb wrong in the Audi, it's instant death. You know what I mean, but as I said, it's good to have that weakness. I don't think it's good for a car to just have everything. You know what I mean? And then pretty much the whole field is in the same car. And I actually planned, I actually planned to pick the Audi. I started making liveries, started thinking of the Audi only. But if this, if I think the majority of the field is going to be an Audi, I'm picking something different. You know what I mean? Mm. Right, right. Lately, he's been driving Audi heavily. Yeah, that probably means he'll be in the Audi. Um, yeah, so for me, if that's the case, my pick is going to be between the Ferrari and the Bentley. And um, I don't know. I might have to, for the first time in like however many seasons, I might have to start looking back at the Lambo again. But we'll see. We'll see, man. Mm. We'll definitely see. But yeah, I've, I mean, it's, it's subjective. Some people, for instance, look at Noble. Look at, I watched a race with him at Spa in the GTR doing 17-1s. Do you know what I mean? The track conditions were fast. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't even the perfect conditions. Track temps were like 35. So, I mean, there's time in cars. It's just how the hell are you getting it out? Do you know what I mean? How are you getting a 17 one out of a Nissan GTR? I don't know. know what I mean, same with same with his lap times at Paul Ricard and then McLaren. I remember after that race, we literally got in that car trying to figure out what what did he do to it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy, but uh, he's he's an insane what did he guy. Do again? I can't remember. He well, me and you got the exact same time, like 54 something, 54 eight. And he was about. Two and a half temps quicker, but in the race he was just gone. Do you know what I mean? Oh, that was one of the best races. Oh, that races was it. Yo, that was crazy. I saved that race, and I've watched that race about three times. Literally, I just watched <laughs> the replay. That race, I don't know how we did not crash into each other in that race, man. That was crazy, crazy. Close. Yeah, 
But um, yeah, right now, right now, I think that after the tire model, I think the Audi takes it at the moment. And I, I was even mm. speaking to um, Noble about the cars, and he said himself he thinks that if you get the right setup on the Audi, where you can make it like a little more like curb compliant and stuff, like the car's a beast. You know what I mean? It can't be touched. It's got the front end and and all of that. But um, there's one thing we didn't factor into these decisions. And over a season, this might prove to be important. And that is the rain. You know what I mean? Yes. Now, if you're driving a complete calendar of dry races, then, you know, the 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 pecking order is what it is. But when you start talking about rain... You have to switch around the order real quick because we know that the Lexus don't play no games in the rain. None. No games. Know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that, that SRO, that friend, that guy was lapping like two seconds a lap quicker than guys like Frankie. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? When you see that, you know that car's got some pace in the wet. So <laughs> my, my bot's like really strict out here. Like 34 messages were deleted by a moderator. Wow. Is that how strict my bot is? I'm going to turn him down. Do you know what I mean? But um, <laughs> but um, yeah, the the Lexus in the rain, man, yo, crazy, crazy. I can't remember. What, I think it was a. Do you remember Nurburgring? Remember Nurburgring as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it zero, Stefan? Just on stuff. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? On stuff, and that's what I'm saying. If you're planning for a season, and let's say we have, because I think the the conditions are gonna be. Like random, I think. I don't think there's like nothing set in stone. I'm not too sure. I don't think anything's set in stone. I think there's just going to be more mm. random races where anything can happen. We don't know what's going to happen, yeah. which I guess is closer to real life. So you got to sort of prepare for all sort of um, possibilities. But if we mm. if we have a what's it eight races and four of them races are wet, anybody competent in that Lexus in the rain is going to be at the front. You know what I mean? Mm. Anybody, and if you get someone who's super quick, like like yourself or or Chloe or any of these people that have got pace, mm. that race is getting destroyed. Do you know what I mean? It's going to be Lexus one, two, three, four. However many people are in that thing. Do you know what I mean? Lexus one, two. I remember when we was practicing for um, I remember practicing for Catalonia last season, which was wet, and um, I think it was Andrade, mate. We was in the practice lobby. I'm telling you, I was like 10 toes down, 100% every corner in the Lambo. This guy just drove up to me so quickly. I was like, damn, I knew it. My race was done. Yeah, you know what I mean? I knew it before the race even started. I wasn't, I was doing nothing in that race as long as it stayed wet. He was flying. Do you know what I mean? And I was watching these lines like, this guy's not even hitting the apex. He's still pulling away. Do you know what I mean? The car's a beast in the wet. I mean, Chloe says that's why I'm taking a Lexus. Want to win all the rain races? It's, that's it's, that's it's, one of the reasons why I've got it as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a decent strategy, man. Because <laughs> there's definitely going to be some wet yeah. races, and from what yeah. I've seen, there ain't nothing that can keep up with that thing in the rain. Nothing. Yeah. And Aoi loves wet mm. races. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And Wolf said, hopefully, there's not a lot of wet races. Um, if there's eight, if there's eight races, you, you got to think at least, at least, at the very least, there's going to be two wet ones. You know, and then let's let's say, for instance, if if what what tracks would you say from the calendar that the Lexus would struggle at? Because we haven't got a Hungaro ring. I think okay, let's say it will struggle at Mazzano. Now let's say Mazzano is a wet race. All of a sudden, that becomes a Lexus race. You know what I mean, then other tracks where the Lexus is strong, like Silverstone. You know what I mean, like that that wet race is like a that's like a free win right there. You know what I mean, so it, it's crazy, like. It could be anything. What happens if Nurb Nurb is wet? We already seen what exactly. happened last season. Zero Stefan was just on stuff. I mean, but then again, you got what did you get? No, you pitted and you you just hit the pit limit yeah. at about twenty seconds too early. But um, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually I actually think that the Lexus is bugged. I don't think it's a. I don't think that it's got like <laughs> extra horsepower or 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 that. I just feel like the balance just stays exactly the same even when it's wet. It feels like it's not even that wet. You know what I mean? It's just <laughs> oh, first race of the season, 100% dry. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've already seen the conditions. Oh, right, right, right. Funny. But I will say this about the first race. I believe there is three cars that can get pole for that race. The Lexus is quick enough, the Audi's quick enough, and the Lambo's quick enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
them three cars around there, I feel like are slightly quicker than anything else. Do you know what I mean? Like I've got the Ferrari into a 53 before, but that's, that's not, that's not been on this patch. That was in the last patch. And I don't even know what I did to do it. Cause I can't do it again. That's for sure. Do you know what I mean? But I feel like, uh, I see, I've seen you do 53s. I've seen, I think I've seen Wolf do 53s. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen some incredible times. I think it was yesterday. Some guy did like a, what's his name? Tom Lancaster. I think a few of you might've been in the lobby. The guy was doing like a 53 free in, on like, on Nürburgring and the Audi, like fast track conditions. I was like, wow. The nice done that. But in the race, he wasn't that quick, but it, it's obviously got the quality pace. So I think Nürburgring is going to be important where you qualify. I think there's not a big gap in, in the elite tier between people. You could be four tenths off and be 14th on the grid. Do you know what I mean? It's just one of them. Frankie just needs to stop it. 53 won in the Lambo <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, you know I mean, wow. it's crazy. But the people just got pace, man. That's what it is. You know what I mean, but I'd prefer these guys to be. Oh, he's in the Audi. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know the Audi's quick. And I, I remember Noble talking about. I was watching the SRO stream. I remember Noble saying that. You know, you can get the Audi into the fifty twos. So. Yeah, you know I mean, it's just one of them cars, isn't it? It's one of them cars. But like I said, for me. With the um, with the with the Audi and like the Lambo, you can go rapid. But tell me when you're not getting to that chicane at the end, you're not shitting yourself. You know what I mean, you're absolutely bricking it. If you if you take too much of that curb, dead. Do you know what I mean? That's that's I the think thing. When you get the, the the first the first curb instead of the second one, I mean, you can hit the second one pretty pretty you know pretty hard. But the the first one, it's like just, you just dead instantly. I actually, I struggle more coming off of the second curb. Like, in most cars. In the Ferrari, it happens to me all the time. Backhand gets loose, and then I'm catching it. Do you know what I mean? But I, honestly, what yeah, I think it is... As well. Yeah, like, with the Bentley, I get a little bit of understeer on the way in, so I don't take the corner as fast as I could. But I feel like um, the Bentley, you can be aggressive with it. Do you know what I mean? But... um. <laughs> Wolf said he's got PTSD from the last chicane. <laughs> it's it's tough, man. That is, I actually fear that corner. It's sort of like El Rouge and Radion. Like, before the five-point tyre model, I feared that corner. Like, in practice, I crashed so many times there. You know what I mean? So many times. It's a scary corner because you know if you get it just a little bit wrong, you're in the wall. You know what I mean? Mm. So um yeah it's just it's just one of them it's one of them like if as i said with every car if you can get the perfect setup for your driving style and how you drive you can definitely get time out of them but i think there is cars that have just a higher ceiling more potential than yeah. others you know what i mean and that's what it is but now finally we can talk about the new cars coming out you know what i mean we can talk about the updates and what i hope they don't do um yeah. but if they, you know, what, like, for instance, what Voodoo said, like, if they're just taking it purely off of the performance in, from real life, then we shouldn't get too much stupid BOPs where you get a new car, and because it's a new car, they make it stupid OP. Do you know what I mean? So um, we know we're getting the, the Aston. We know we're getting the Audi. I would perceive we're getting the uh, the Lambo Evo, the 2019 NSX, the new Porsche, which... I'm gonna be interested yeah. to try, yeah. Because yeah, that's you know, interesting. Yeah, that should be that should be pretty that should be pretty good, man. Um, what else? The McLaren 720s. I have no yeah. idea what that's gonna be like. How many cars is that? Because we're getting six. We're getting six new cars. <laughs> and yeah. Honda Honda Evo. Honda Evo. Yeah. Yeah, but ain't that an NSX in it? Ban the 720s. You want to ban the 720s now? Oh yeah. Then, did you say new Audi already? Or? Yeah, I said the new Audi. Um, yeah. Oh, I can't wait for Zanvor. That's one of my favorite tracks, man. Love that track. On a set of course of one, I, I've done so many laps around that track. It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, but, um, for if like for instance, yeah, if they're saying they base everything off of, um, they based everything off of Blong Pain, which I perceive would have been last season. Why is the Lexus so good? I think the Lexus won like one race, but 
I wouldn't say it was a consistent top three runner. You know what I mean? I, I didn't understand mm. where even the Bentley to a certain degree wasn't wasn't outstanding. If you watch Blong Pain, ninety nine percent of the time, it's Lambo, Audi, Mercedes. You know what I mean? Ninety percent of the time, you might get other events where the Ferrari will be strong, or you know what I mean, or the Porsche might be strong, but generally, you spin the same three. You know what I mean? I'm not too sure where the the Bentley and the Lexus really got their pace from. But I guess, you know, look, these guys, they know what they're doing, innit? I mean, they're the ones making the game. But I, I, from from watching Blong Pain, I just see the same same guys battling all the time. So, yeah. Yeah, it's always either Mercedes. Yeah, Audi, yeah. Audi. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. So obviously, like, what I want to work out is if, you know, we're going to get these new cars, and because they're 2019 Evos, do the 2018 cars become obsolete? Do they become pointless to even run? You know what I mean? Because if, if the new cars come out and we're getting six, so you could you could kind of say that these cars are sort of replacing, could be replacing yeah. the six cars we got in this picture right now. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, let me read what Voodoo said. How strong the cars are is related to how Kuno simulate them. Cars in real Blanc Plain are as strong as their team and especially drivers make them. That's very true. That is very true. Yeah, you, actually, you got a good point, Shaggy, then. When you think about it, it's, it has already happened with 2018 Bentley and the, the 2018 GTR have replaced the old Bentley and the new GTR and then no one care about them anymore. But for True. like right now, these are like the cars we're on the screen are like the main cars. Do you know what I mean? So I guess I guess if if all six cars are quicker, quicker than these cars, then I'm sure ain't no one touching the AMG again. Like it it, it kind of doesn't even make sense to run an old an old Audi if you got a new one. Do you know what I mean? I mean you wouldn't go to a shop and have a choice of buying a 2019 Mercedes and think you know what? Nah, I'll take the one that was made in 2015. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So yeah, prob- probably makes more sense. sense. But mm. I-, I hope that the NSX is up there this time. So we just have oh, more. Oh, yeah, the Aston Martin as well. Yeah, yeah, Aston Martin. I think a lot of people are going to want to drive that. A lot. Yeah, you know I mean? I want to try that as well. That yeah. looks nice. Um, let me have a read of the comments. The car, the Triumph, what's that? Trumped in Spa struggles to be in the top 10 usually, but in Spa it was packed with factory talent. Kevin Estre was godlike. Yeah, man, this uh, it definitely the BOP is probably not a hundred percent accurate because it, it is true it does come down to a lot of driver talent and how good the teams are. For instance, if you look at F one, all of them teams have the same engine as Mercedes, but they're nowhere near. You know what I mean? Because their team doesn't operate on the same level. You know what I mean? So technically, they all have the potential to do exactly what Mercedes are doing. But they can't because their team don't operate on the same level. You know what I mean? So obviously they not all of them have like a you know like a Hamilton or Verstappen, the clerk, these sort of guys. They don't have them drivers in their cars. So you know if you were basing it just off of off of that, then you'd have to say that obviously Mercedes look a lot stronger than everybody else. But really, it's just the team is not good enough. Look at Williams; they got a Mercedes engine. They're terrible. <laughs> I mean, so we'll see. I'm so let's another question. If you could choose to upgrade to any of the new cars that's coming out, I don't know if I named all six. I think I named all six. If you could choose to, I was saying, if you could choose to any of the cars of the new cars coming out, which car would you upgrade to? If you could switch that mid season, which car would be the one that you'd want to upgrade to? Forgetting about the speed, just, just because you just want to drive it. So you got the new Audi, new I think Lambo Evo possibly, NSX, um, 720s, the Porsche, and the Aston. Do you know what? Like Cucumber said, probably mm-hmm. the Aston Martin, you know. Yeah. And gen- just just purely, I, I like the look of it. Right? Mm-hmm. It's a very nice car, as well. I mean, the the Aston Martin that we have currently as well is a nice yeah. car to drive, but just yeah. probably not 
quite there yet, I guess, with the uh, the top six cards that you're showing. Mm. I think. But I think. Go on. No, I think the I think the the old Aston because it's like one of the older cars, and it? it's like 2012 or something. I think it diffuse. It doesn't even have like hasn't even got the downforce the other cars have got. So that's probably why it's just it's just not really mm. a viable option. But yeah, carry on. Yeah, man, I'd say the Aston for me would probably be the car to look into mm. as well. But then I'd be tempted to look into the the new Audi as well. It does. I've seen a picture of it. it looks lovely. Yeah, yeah, the Audi looks mad. I'm going to say 720S, man. I've got to have it. Oh, Darren. I've got to have it. Okay. okay. I respect that. I'm f- I'm fed up with these guys just disrespecting McLaren's name. You know what I mean? And I'll tell you why. As I said before, yeah, if you put half these cars stock, yeah, stock road version on a racetrack, McLaren would wipe 90% of these GT3 cars easy. You know what I mean? And then it comes to Blong Pain and it gets some shitty BOP. You know what I mean? And it's done. You know what I mean? But let's be real. On a racetrack, stock version, like McLaren would destroy half these cars on the racetrack. You know what I mean? So it's it's, it's crazy. Um, Cucumber said SRO nerfs anything with a bloody turbo. As well. Kind of true. It is actually yeah. kind of true. I mean, I didn't even think about that. I remember, I remember when the, when the M6 uh, first came out, it was pretty strong. You know what I mean, M6 was quick. You don't even see people <laughs> running the M6 anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, when, what was the last long pain race I watched? I don't even think I saw an M6. You know what I mean? What BMW need to do is just forget the M6. Forget all these long, big cars. Just go back to like make a new version of a Z4 or something, man. Shoot, I talk to him. Shoot, I have a conversation. <laughs> yeah. Tell them that you're the number one yeah, BMW yeah. driver. You want the Z4 back. <laughs> you want your downforce back. You want your corner speed back. Do you know what I mean? You want your traction back. Forget that M6. All that stuff is dead to me. Do you know what I mean, I know they're trying to, they've got the the um, GTE version, the M8 and all that. I don't like it. The car's ugly. Let's get the Z4 back. Get that sound back. You know what I mean? It's just, it's not happening. Do you know what I mean? That whole turbo thing for the, nah, Z4. Do you know what I mean? I mean that that was the car right there. That car was a beast. Um, Wolf said, "Just give us the ability to adjust ballast for each driver on the server or lobby side, and and it lets the players balance the cars how they like." Yeah, I'm sure you could do that on the original set. I think. Being says they are for 2022. Huh? Yeah, what well, they're creating a new set? What's that? M4, new M4. Ah, yes. And you, yeah, M fours are mad. I'd love an M four in real life. <laughs> yeah, if they bring if they bring the ballast, then I think that's that'll be that'll be a game changer, definitely. Mm. I think with them doing the um, I think they do the the pit stops now. You can have a a minimum time, I believe, like in real life, so no one gets an advantage. Like we saw last season with the Bentley, you could just no like no stop, like didn't have to take no fuel and stuff like that. Um. Yeah, they they need to. I think ballast would be perfect. It would be perfect. Now, uh, whether you'd want to like throw so much ballast that it makes the edit sex a uh, viable option, I don't know. Because then our lap times would be hella slow. Everyone, and I always feel like you know what I hate. I hate sometimes I watch, I watch, I watch as many leagues as possible. Just to, I just like to watch league racing. So I watch. Uh, it's like an Australian league. Sometimes if you jump on Twitch at like, I don't know, 10 in the morning, you see them racing. And I look at the times, I look at the lines, I think, nah, these guys, they're not, they're not as fast as us. But because our conditions are always so fucked, do you know what I mean? It's always like yeah. 35 degrees, fast track temp or green, do you know what I mean? Like it always yeah. looks like we're actually slower than what we are. Do you know what I mean? I'm watching these guys drive around in like 19 degrees. I'm thinking, nah, do you know what I mean? You want an i8 shaped GT3 car? No, I can't have that. I can't have that. Or can I have that? I mean, possibly. But do you know why I don't like the i8? Because it just looks too electric. I don't. I hate electric cars, man. It looks fully electric to me. I mean, get me as far away as possible from electric cars. I don't believe in Hoovers. <laughs> Hey, we, the driver swaps do work, don't they? Still, don't. Do um, 
I, I, does it, I tried because I know that when we did it, it was a bit it bugged. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I, um, tried it. I know with the driver swap thing, I'm sure it's like the, the bug was like you could do a driver swap, but then you couldn't go back into the pits. I don't know if that was ever fixed. You know what I mean, but I, I would love AOR to do some sort of I don't know four hour event free drivers or something like that. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. That'd be that'd be pretty cool. Like in the season, you have that one team event. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> um, I don't know, but like for me personally, the the Z4 was the last BMW GT3 car that I liked. You know what I mean? I just I'm not into these. Shoot, I'm surprised I like the Bentley, but I just like Bentleys in general. But I don't, I don't really like the huge looking GT3 cars. It just don't really make any sense. I don't even like. I don't like to look at the GTR. I don't like to look at the GTR in real life, like normal road worthy GTRs, and I don't like it in the game. It's just, it just doesn't make any sense. There's no aerodynamics there at all. But um, I I, I like like you know like low, sleek looking. The car looks like it goes through the air fast. That's what I like. So when I look at the Lambo, that looks like it cuts through air. Do you know what I mean? That's what I like. Yeah. Shooter says technically half of the other cars are cheating. Why? It's because they haven't got a BMW badge on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a GT car is supposed to be front engine. Is it? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I'm sure it ain't... Ain't GT3 basically supposed to like just be like roadworthy cars or some shit? I don't know. Hmm. It's true. I mean, like for for instance, um, you see like that 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 Cadillac. What is it? That Cadillac VRS. The one that was in um, when I was in P cars. How have they got an Uber car doing GT races? And it was rapid as well. That kind of that just looks like an Uber in my eyes, but the car was rapid, <laughs> but it doesn't look like it's supposed to be racing. Like it baffles me. You know what I mean? But what what I hoped, what I hoped I would see from uh, Kunos with this game is the whole interaction with Blancpain Asia in America. And I'm actually, I was mm. doubting it at first. I actually think it's going to happen. I think we're mm. going to be getting flipping China, all sorts, all these, um, what's the track called? Friggin' Shang International. I think we're going to be getting all them tracks, man. I swear. Do you think we'll get Fuji? Uh, Do they even go there? <laughs> uh, they must go Fuji. Anything, anything that part of the side of the world will go Fuji, I think. Hopefully. Yeah, Watkins Glen on this game would be amazing. It'd be crazy. I mean, I can't wait to see people have been at the bus stop in the Lamborghini. Happy days. I'm just looking forward to Suzuka. Oh, yes. Shaggy Dan says, the fact that we already got intercontinental shit put in pretty much guarantees we'll be getting other series as well. Don't make me happy. Don't make me happy. Um, <laughs> Chloe says, he has a lot of meme cars, but not as meme as Janetta. Yeah, just is garbage. I don't want ever to see that car in a game again. You know what I mean? I don't understand. You know what I mean? Never made any sense to me. I hate the Janetta. It doesn't make no sense. It doesn't look like a GT3 car. It doesn't sound like one. It just sounds like someone... It just looks like someone's project that they had in their back garden that they decided to bring to a racetrack. Don't want ever see that car again. Kota, Road America. Um, I like Kota. I like Kota. I don't like it on P cars. Mainly because the conditions are always bad. Um, Road America will be great, I think. Yeah. Road America will be insane. Um, <laughs> I'll buy it five times. Kunos needs to make money. That's true. That's true. So what are you saying, by If Kunos need to make money, you're saying they're going to be selling a lot more DLC. Or, you know what I mean? Um, Yo... What's happening, Dow King? Yeah, the new cars look good, man. The new cars look good. Sideways says, is the same car fast as ever, or does it depend on track? It definitely depends on track, and I think for every track, the cars have a different BOP. To go. It's basically in junction with real life. So 
how it is in the real real sport is how they've tried to project it onto the game. So you kind of got to find a car that's got a good balance at most tracks, but you're never going to be in the fastest car at every track. It just, it don't happen. I mean, um, yeah, Bathurst will be crazy. Bathurst is going to be crazy, but scary at the same yeah. time. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, Bathurst has come to the game as well, so. Yeah. We we all know we know we know Nordschleife's coming, but you're never gonna see me there. Anytime we do a Nordschleife race, I'm officially a while commentator. Simple. I have a feeling each um, continent series will be its own DLC. I think it'll be like that as well, personally. Um, but you'd have to pay for it separately as well. I think it's just going to be like a normal DLC. If you look at the first set of Corsa, um, when they brought like Ferrari packs out, Porsche packs out, you had to pay for that individually. Oh, yeah. But I mean, I don't mind that, innit? As long as it's not like stupid prices, I'm cool. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, also, I'm guessing this, ne this next update is obviously going to be free, innit? Yeah, the next update is free. That's the six cars and, the, and Zambor. That'll be free, but... Probably going into next year. Obviously, we're going to start forking out a little bit. Um, Cucumber said he'd also like to see GT2 and GT4 cars added. Um, I haven't watched any GT... Well, GT2 is basically like GTE. I don't know. Last GT2 car, from my mind, was like... What's it like? The, the M3 or some shit? GT4, ah, bit of fun. Why not? Um mm -hmm. TCR, I like touring cars, so I wouldn't mind that either. Um, Slider says some chassis suit certain circuits. Yeah, that's true. Um, I feel like there's definitely, there's definitely like a percentage of cars that are, you know, they're not going to be bad anywhere. You know what I mean? But what what is good about a setup is with, with weather conditions and because I feel like even like the grip levels, like some cars, when the grip's lower, they're much harder to drive than others. So when you drive the Lambo, when the grip's like green or fast, you know, the cars are a lot more sketchy. Whereas if you jump in a Bentley or, or Ferrari, when the grip's low, it's not as bad. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't hit the car as hard. So them things can affect the, the pecking order as well. But as I said, it starts raining. We know the Lexus is gone. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, man, it's pretty cool. I mean... I love these debates, man. I've, we've been talking about which car has been the fastest for, like, I don't know, since this game since came out. Since the beta came out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Literally. The beta came out. It's changed in so many different directions, mm. hasn't it? Like, from BM, Bentley, Audi. Yeah. Now the new update coming out next week, yeah. isn't it? 27th. Because mm. that's when the McLaren Shadow Project comes. Right, right, right. Yeah, I've, I, I, I'm fearing they're going to wait all the way to the 27th. I don't want them to. I want it to mm. release. Um, Shaggy is saying the GT2 and GT1 literally just got revived. SRO will surely use the game to promote it. Good point, man. Is, mm. is the GT1, like, are they just using, I think it was like the, what, like the hyper cars or, or whatever it was. They're using them sort of cars now, I think. I'm not too sure. I think CJ was saying something about that. Um, GT2 is not GTE, much different specs. Talking about the new series presented by SRO, the different racing org. I'll have to have a little look. I mean, I, I, I te like for me, I tend to get into games and then after I play the game, then I go and watch the sport afterwards. You know what I mean? Um, tch -tch -tch -tch. It's easier to catch slides with front engine than mid or rear engine. That's kind of true. I've I try my best not to even slide the cars anymore, man. Because I feel like once I start sliding, that's it. The balance is just dead after that. It's gone. You know what I mean, I will. yeah, yeah. That's why. That's why I play with like the brake bias so much, man. Like it's, I cannot tell you. After a few laps, I'm playing with that so much. You know what I mean, unless I feel like the the setups that stable, I don't need to change too much. But I would definitely during the course of a race. I'll be going up and down on brake balance quite frequently, man. Especially in cars like the Lambo. Um, it's some kind of similar concept to the new replacement of LMP1 
think for GT1. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, GT1 back in the day was cool. Back in the day. But I got bored of the whole LMP hybrid crap. It's boring. You know what I mean? Watching a car that's just way quicker than anything else break down and give feed the car a win at Le Mans is kind of boring to me. But, um, yeah, it, it proper died. I think... Yeah, they need to bring back some of the substance, man. Don't don't let them bring in the electric stuff. That's what's killing everything, man. All this <laughs> electric stuff. You know, I'm against it, like big yeah. time. I'm against it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> the vacuums, man. I'm against all of that. I watched like I went on Twitter and I saw the uh, what was it? The new sounds for the but what's it? The, um, Formula E, and then they really yeah. had a video like there was something to be proud of. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Like just a bunch of Dysons, man. You know what I mean, <laughs> done formally to me. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. what makes it worse yeah. is their tracks are garbage as well. Just a bunch of street tracks put together for the weekend. Nah, not feeling it. Dead to me. Do you know what I mean, but um, yeah, I would say for now, right now, the Audi taking the number one spot. But we all know when the new cars come out, we might have to do another one of these, man. Yeah, of course, of course. Oh, sorry, crop. I didn't even. Say, sorry, crop. Um, what do you What do you think about the nine eleven in ACC? Um, were you talking about the one that's currently at now? If I had a picture of a bin and a scrapped up piece of paper, that's what I think of the nine eleven. Yeah. It's done. Right. I mean, it's done out here. Cause I tried it loads of times, man. I tried it, and it's it just it is apparent to me that it just hasn't got. It doesn't have the the. It just doesn't have the the the, the stuff. Like I've tried it so many times. You understand? Like I always feel mm. like, oh, this car's crap, and then I'll be sat here by myself. I think, you know what? I'm just gonna tune the, the tune the hell out of the Porsche, getting it, and yeah. it's just, the pace is not there, man. You know what I mean, I try everything to make it feel balanced. It just feels weird. I, I try and I drive it stock, and then I turn into a corner, and it tries to kill me. Then I start tuning it, and then it's got like mad, mad. Um, understeer on power like crazy amounts do you know what I mean and so I just got to the point where I'm like I'm done like there's nothing I can do I got a pretty decent time of it at Spa I think the best thing I can say about the uh, the Porsche is the fact that the traction control you can run it as low as you want and the back end's pretty planted and it goes through our Rouge easy probably even easier than the Bentley that's the yeah. only good things I have to say. It's crap on the brakes. It's crap round fast corners. Yeah, that's it. That's all I've got to say. But the new one's coming out, and they rotated the engine, so I believe it's supposed to be a much better handling car. You know what I mean? Yeah. Me, personally, I think the people who design Porsche are the laziest people in the world, and I don't even know how they're still in the job. How have you been designing the same car since I was about, I think, probably before I was born? I'm like 34. You know what I mean? They've had that same design the whole time. Do you know what I mean? They haven't even tried to. Do you know what? We're going to do something a little different. Do you know what I mean? Mm. What do I think about the Bentley? I think the Bentley is a very, very good car. You know what I mean? It's it's a bit of an all-rounder. Struggles a little bit at um, the tighter circuits, but it's, it's a solid car. You know what I mean? It's a solid car. It's one of them cars where... It, it affords you a little bit a little bit more leeway as in making mistakes you can get away with driving a little bit more aggressively than you can in some of the other cars whereas you probably get a little bit more punished if you start throwing and ragging around a Lamborghini um, that's a great point though Shaggy Dan the Bentley will teach you bad muscle memory because you rely on it too much that is, the, that is a perfect point that is what I used to say literally all the time if if the Bentley is the first car you jump in onto this game, then you're probably not going to be that great in other cars. You know what I mean? Mm. Because you just, you know what I mean? You get away with so much. I mean, remember when we used to, we used to drill um, Marley about him being in the Bentley at Spa 24-7? You know what I mean? You used yeah, to wind me up. Habits. Yeah, you get bad habits, bro. I'm like, telling you, you can't drive anything else like that. You know what I mean? Especially Spa as well. Where it's just, you know what it is at Spa? It's the middle sector. It's so fast through um, Puon. Is it Puon? It's like yeah. you can get on the power so quick and it hooks up onto the apex. And it's just like, I can't do that in any other car. Yeah, yeah. 
in like I'm like I'm like hitting the throttle on and off, on and off, on and off in all the other cars. The Bentley straight back on, gone. Do you know what I mean? Even when the fuel's heavy. Yeah, you know I mean, but um, it's crazy, man. But then, as I said, we saw I saw Noble beat Frankie. Frankie was in the Bentley. Noble was in the GTR. Do you know what I mean? I see him. I mean, he didn't destroy him or nothing, but their pace was like dead similar. Do you know what I mean? So it just shows, man, if you know what you're doing. But you the heart. Okay. Yeah. Hook, sorry. <laughs> but what what I think is it is yeah. as well. What's important? I've started to notice, and um, you know, I, I watch a lot of videos. I, I notice another. I think he's an esports driver on the set. And what these guys are doing is they're running very very low traction, and that's how they're getting the cars rotated. Do you know what I mean? So it's like if you want to risk running, it, yeah. they're running low traction. I'm talking about traction on like one. Do you know what I mean? They're running like extremely low traction. You see people. You see some people doing it changing their traction out of some corners and stuff like that but oh yeah they're running like one i'm seeing it a lot like a lot of people are running like one you know what i mean and i mean it's cool especially for a qualifying lap i think it's probably the fastest i think even in the real world they say in perfect conditions their traction control is like right down do you know what i mean mm. and i've seen it like in that gtr he's got to be doing that got to be running that traction low and it actually helps you a lot if you if you put the traction on, say you put it on free, and then go around a fast corner where traction doesn't actually even cut in, like pull on, the traction doesn't cut in when you go through that corner, yeah? But the mm. higher you have your traction, you get a lot more understeer through that corner. You know what I mean? You don't see it cut in, but it's affecting your car in, in the way how the car's steering. So, yeah. But I'm just wondering people, like, through fast corners, I don't necessarily want to be messing around. Because I'll start taking my focus off of the corner and before you know it, done. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm someone, I just like to just look at what's in front of me and drive. You know what I mean? Me changing the, the brake bias is enough. I don't think I can, <laughs> I, I can't comprehend it any more than that. You know what I mean? All these new school drivers that can just have all these buttons and start pressing buttons while they're driving. I can't do that, man. It winds me up. Why are you changing buttons while she's driving anyway, you know? It's no need, you know? Yeah, but like, for, for, for instance, yeah, like you played like F1 and all that. How much buttons yeah. are these guys changing when they're playing F1? You know what that's I mean? why I come off it. Yeah, like. It came too much after all. Yeah, but I'm seeing people have similar traits on this game and it's quick. You know what I mean? Mm. Unless you just want to drive around with one traction all the time. But as you know, we're not driving in optimal conditions all the time, so. You know, mm. it's it's a lot it's a lot more risky. Yeah. I mean I did try it around um Nurburgring that time. Yeah, yeah. As well. And it's it's I tell you what, it's it's very difficult to yeah, race yeah. with. But you did well. a you did look at the time you did in quality, you did like a fifty three seven in the Lexus right? yeah, I, mean, I remember yeah, I yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you can get it right, it's mm. quick. You it's... know what I mean? If you get it wrong, you bin it and then you're starting the first race of the season in nineteenth and you're pissed. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, for me, I think I would just stick to the free four traction. You know I mean, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not messing about. Like, I know what I'm like in quali. Worst qualifying, worst qualifier ever. You know what I mean? Mm. Shaggy Dan says he does brake bias all the time. It's a habit from original AC. Yeah, I don't mind brake bias. But I think the original AC, I swear it was like a little bit easier to lock up in it. Um, but it definitely makes a difference. I've noticed the brake bias in. You know, like sometimes when you're doing races and then for some reason it's like so hard to slow the car down for certain corners. Like mm. that's when you know you need to be moving your brake bias rearwards, man. It stops the locking. And then a few laps later, it's like that's gone away. And then all of a sudden your car's like... Exactly. Something new's come. Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden your car's like oversteery for the corner and then you start moving your brake bias back. It's just it's just having the, having the, the, the feeling to know your car's changing as the race is going on. Do you know what I mean? Crop mm. says, I only, I only change according to the fuel load. You know what? I haven't really thought about that. I never really thought about how oh, my fuel's low. I'm going to start um, putting on more front brake bias or whatever. I just, I just change the feeling of how I'm driving at the time. If I start feeling like my car is going to be sliding into corners all over the gaff, then I'm mm. making a change. I'm not... Before, I would wait. I would like... I would do I'd do dumb things like 
I'd move the brake bias backwards and then slide through corners for about three, four laps, and then I'd change it. For me, if I slide through two corners, I'm changing it back instantly. I'm not even waiting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Krupp said, that's a habit I got from driving a Porsche Cup in I renting. <laughs> I renting. Uh, it's too funny. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll probably be getting an eye racing soon, man. I'll be getting an eye racing soon and giving that a go. Um, but you see that the problem is right now is there's a lot of distractions about right now. You know what I mean? We got, we got a set of courses come out with this new, they're going to be coming out obviously with the new cars, Call of Duty's coming out. I don't care. I play COD. Uh, I, you know what I mean? <laughs> Love a bit of Call of Duty. Do you know what I mean? And then obviously with AOR, I feel like, you're stupid if you're not at least on, like, like enough in it, especially early on when you know people grind it. You know what I mean? Uh, the new COD is decent. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie, lad. I was, I was, I was getting some kill feeds on the new Call of Duty, pal. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I was doing decent mm. stuff, but um, Jump. yeah, I feel like <laughs> I feel like for, especially for early, yeah. You did you jump on PC? I don't think he was on the PC yet. Um, the first race of what AOR season was it on P cars? I can't remember. I was in the McLaren. I can't remember what season it was. Maybe the season before this one, bro. I'm telling you, grinding crazy. I was grinding it so hard, and I didn't even like P cars that much. But I grinded that for that first Brands Hatch race, man. And then it showed. And then after that, I started getting more and more bored, and then it just starts showing in the performances. You know what I'm saying? That's how it is, mm. man. But field's just too close the field everyone's just too fast you can't afford to just oh i'll just get on the day before and do practice then you know what i mean it's gonna you're gonna see it in the race you know what i mean yeah definitely does affect you isn't it? yeah yeah so, all right, this might turn into a call of duty call of duty talk real quickly watch the viewers <laughs> drop down to free me yeah, call me John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah me shaggy dan and 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 knee cray I mean, chat and Call of Duty, but you know, Call of Duty looks good. I'm going to definitely be on it. Like a fool, I got it on PS4, even though I got a PC. I told, I didn't even think, I didn't even think two seconds. I'm like, yep, getting that on PS4. But luckily we got the um, cross-platform stuff, which I don't even think's that fair, but I'm willing to slay some Xbox guys and some PC guys as well. You know what I mean? Um... RDR is coming out in 5th of November. What is RDR? Red Dead Redemption. No, <laughs> that's not Red, Red Dead Redemption 2. No, no, no. That's not true. Oh, it's, oh, it's coming out on PC. Oh, but we already got it on PS4, isn't it? Red Dead Redemption has been out for time on PS4. I mean, I'm there thinking like, Red Dead? Like, what? A new Red Dead? I'm thinking, hold on a second. This is new for them because they mm. never had it. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was baffled for a second. I... Rockstar don't make games year after year. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> Seven year gaps for a Rockstar. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Rockstar be out here making these legendary games and not even trying to recoup all the success. You know what I mean? It should be on every platform. You know what I mean? Red yeah. Dead, my, my missus actually bought that the other day. She's been playing it. You know what I mean? It's, it's a good game, man, but I know I ain't got the patience for no story modes. I've got it as well on PS4. Yeah, I, I can assure you from what I've seen in Red Dead, I, I'm the kind of person I can't play a story mode, but I will watch somebody else play it. Red Dead is amazing, yeah. man. That is an amazing game. The graphics, are, even on PS4, the graphics are crazy. So I can only imagine what it's going to look like on PC. Um, um, Krupp said I'm more excited about CP 2077. I don't know that. Uh, you lot got hook me up with the um, hook me up with the. PC games, man. Yeah. You know I mean, I don't buy any PC games. I just buy what basically what you lot buy. If I see you lot playing a game, I just buy it because I know that you lot own it. You know what I mean, Cyberpunk. What's Cyberpunk now? I don't. I don't think I've seen that. I'll have to look it up, man. I'll have to look it up. Um, but my my missus is like she's on my she's on my case about you know using using my gaming PC and stuff. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a fan of that, you know, 
It's an old world game by the same makers as The Witcher. And The Witcher was a Witcher was a big game. The Witcher was massive on PS4, I remember, at the time when that came out. Into I'm gonna have to yeah man, I'm gonna have to look up these games, man. Post some links on my Discord or something. I'm gonna start looking up trailers because I need to start expanding on the old games, man. Sometimes you know when you need a break away from the racing, you just need something something else to play. Yeah, I mean, you, you down. yeah, because I feel like with racing, yeah, the best time in my racing career, I'm saying racing career, like I had the helmet and the overalls, sim racing, yeah, <laughs> the best time is when, when I when I was able to have a break away from the game, and when I come back, like, it makes you like miss the racing, and when you miss the racing, you hit it so much harder when you come back, me personally, anyway, I know Shaggy Dan, man, no streams, you're not streaming for us no more, you know what I mean, it's out of order, man. I haven't seen you. I haven't seen Shaggy Dan stream for time. Yeah. I used to get on, yeah. Shaggy Dan used to make me get on the game. If I saw Shaggy Dan streaming, I look at everyone in the lobby. Ah, let me get on. Do you know what I mean? Now I just sit around, loafing around in a hive mind, waiting for people to jump in. Just sat in the pit lane until I see somebody. I mean, that's what that's what my life has become now. <laughs> Sitting in a hive mind, waiting for action. Do you know what I mean? It's crazy. But yes, what is the time now anyway? It's 20 to 10. Wow. Oh, yeah. Time's flying, man. Yeah, Sh- Shaggy Dan's going to come back. Oh, man. How, how, you, how you feeling about coming back though, Shaggy Dan? Are you feeling confident? You feel like you, you got rusty? I can't not play a game for two two months. I'll be terrible when I come back. Oh my god, I'll be so bad when I come back, man. You don't even understand how long it takes me to get back up to speed. It's like riding a bike. Nah, not for me, man. I struggle. I struggle big time. In fact, if I don't drive a car for more than like three, four days, I can't even get anywhere near the pace I was doing before. Big. Oh, you've been riding bikes. Sound like CJ. <laughs> I mean, CJ rides a lot of bikes. BMXs. Yep. Not in tier one. Yeah, but there's there's still some pretty decent guys in tier two, man. Varela. I was surprised Varela didn't make it into tier tier one. He was fast. Um, that Axel Axel Petit. He was he was a reserve. I think I saw his name for the reserve. Mm. He's actually an esports driver, and he was a was he second at Spa in that SRO event. He's quick. But I tell you what, at Mizano, I was on his case. All my days, I was on his case. You know what I mean? Mm. After that race, I looked him in the mirror. I said, yes. Yes. You know what I mean? Now, you got bumped up. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, he, he was fast, man. He was mm. fast. Um, Hassini was, yeah. No complaints about Hassini for once. I didn't have a single complaint. He... I thought at the start of the race, yeah, I thought, I can't wait for the formation lap with this guy. I cannot wait for the formation lap. Because normally, he just floors it like green formation lap. Hussein is just gone. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, he he was calm, man. He was calm. He was kind of patient with his overtake. You know, he's get must be getting better. What do I think about tier one? Uh, yeah, tier one's cool. I think there's some... Um, I'm going to be real. I think there's some people that are probably lucky to be in there. Do you know what I mean? I think there's people that, um, what can I say? It's more about who you know than about how fast you are or how consistent you are. Do you know what I'm saying? I've seen there's guys that are raced in tier two, like that Varela guy. I did a few, I did like a, like an hour long session with him. It was just him and somebody else in the, in the lobby and at Mazzano. And he had, similar pace to me and he weren't really making mistakes either in fact he beat me you know what I mean but I was, when I saw him in tier 2 I was like right his brand hatch time must have not been all that or something oh, I'm not too sure mm. um, you call them lucky I think they would rather not be there yeah free SRO finest in tier 1 yeah these guys are fast man you know, there's no doubt about it I would have liked to have seen Frankie in there as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, that would be exciting. Mm. 
I'm not one of these people that uh, I don't want no fast people in there because I'm so desperate to win. You know what I mean, I want to see all. Yeah, I want to see all the fast guys in. Mm. You know what I mean, I want to see everyone. You know what I mean, I I even like after I saw that Tom Lancaster guy. You know what I mean, I was thinking, yo, we want to be trying to get this guy in. You know what I mean, this is this is competition. Like his pace was actually crazy. You know what I mean, I know Pete. Obviously, you see, you know, Frankie's done like fifty three ones in an Audi and stuff, but. That guy did a 53-3 in AOR conditions. You know what I mean? Like, fast track, 35 track temp. That's a fast time. You know what I mean? Mm. That is a very fast time. So, I would have loved it, man. would have loved it. Get as much fast people in as possible. You know what I mean? Only thing is, I know my will is on the verge of being deceased. So, hopefully, it can last another eight races, man. The wire starting to thread. Uh, it's a nightmare. <laughs> and I keep like, like someone said to me, someone said to me the other day, it's uh, um, Kuno's just trying to patch it, like this upshifting thing where the car just upshifts by itself. Like, I don't get it. I'll just be driving in the straight and I'll go from fourth to sixth. You know what I mean? Completely kills my speed down the straight and then I'm just being attacked left, right and center. You know what I mean? So, but I, I don't want to, if I have to change my rim, I'll try that, but uh, I don't, I, I just don't have it in me to buy a new wheel right now. You know what I mean? I need to get a new car in real life. <laughs> but yeah, I'm glad Axel got bumped up because he's, he was fast. You know what I mean? But yeah, as I said, like anyone who's tried the Lambo at Mizano, yeah, that, the last, you know, coming off of the, the, the back straight and you've got the sort of triple right-handers, the car is scary sketchy round there like real sketchy i don't know what i don't know what setup Cini had he obviously had something pretty decent but his car looked wired around there and in the race he was just gone you know what i mean that actual guy's pace did fall off a little bit i noticed because yeah, yeah i was all over him I, like, I just kept making mistakes behind him but i was quicker by the time we got like 20 minutes in you could see he was struggling but we had a good battle man it was a good race mm. No, the the CO, um the coordinators do do a good job though, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Out of your free time to do all that. I, f- well. yeah, give him respect. I think we're gonna we're gonna show AOR some some quick love right now. Uh, as I said before, if you look at, because I I've been watching AOR and part of AOR since I originally signed up to AOR in like 2012 on the F1 side of things on PS4. Back then, didn't even end up competing in the end. But I was watching, mm. I've been watching like the AOR races on F1 from like 2011, 2012 times, like way back in the day. Do you know what I mean? And like, I've mm. seen people go from AOR to YouTube to TV to like careers now. Like these guys have literally yeah. got careers out of this. Do you know what I mean? Like, like if you're not in an AOR league, most of these other leagues that any other league I've been part of, tends to sort of die out. Do you know what I mean? AOR is the only one that's... Unless you're on, like, like race department and big other sites like that, the leagues tend to just die out. Other leagues tend to sort of just die out. Do you know what I mean? That's why I've yeah. always made sure, I mean, some capacity, whatever game, I've made sure I've signed up to AOR. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, they're making careers out here. Like, you never know. You never know. I mean, most of the time as well, in, e- in each section, whatever section you've been in, it's been well run. The F one's very well run. The P cars was well run. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the set was the same. Do you know what I'm saying? And we've come from the PS4 side onto the PC side. So we've seen yeah. both sides of things, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, man. AOR all the way for me. Definitely. That's that's pretty much why I didn't sign up to that um, Mr. Gits League. I didn't really know I didn't know so how um, to Mr. Gits League. I remember when that first came up, people were saying, Why didn't you oh. sign up to that? I was like, I don't I'm just so used to AOR structure, I wouldn't wanna sign up to anything else you know what I mean obviously on the iRacing it's going to be different because all that stuff is structured already but even on even on iRacing AOR's structure is pretty good you know what I mean so yeah man it's the way forward it's the way forward but I'm looking forward to the season now I'm not going to lie yeah. uh, yesterday we were talking about should AOR should they um delay the start of the season you know what I mean it's and an update yeah in my head, I was kind of thinking it's a good idea because who, let's just say for argument's sake, imagine the update comes out four on o'clock the on the day of the race. 
Yeah. <laughs> Because I I heard there's gonna it's more than, I heard it's just gonna be it's more than just mm-hmm. cool. the six cars and and a track. I heard it's actually like updates to the actual you know the physics and stuff as well. You know what I mean? Mm. Then then what happens? You know what I mean? You might all your your setups might not even work. Like ninety percent of my old setups don't work. You know what I mean? So what happens then? Yeah, Tough, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. We don't. Yeah, what Shaggy answers right. We don't actually know the day is confirmed, but what we do know is that on the 27th, the McLaren's coming out. So if the McLaren's coming out, I'm inclined, well, I don't know if it's on the 27th, but by the 27th, the McLaren's out, because that's what day the competition starts, the McLaren competition. So we mm. know that car's coming out. So if that car's coming out, I can only assume they're bringing all them cars out at the same time. Otherwise, it just don't make no sense. You know what I mean? So we know by the 27th of October, we're going to have a McLaren at the very least. And I think that was the problem. Like, obviously, people were people were probably waiting. I know the coordinators were probably waiting for the update to come out. It was taking a bit long. People were getting a little bit bored. So, um, yeah, yeah. Hot fixes. It. When did the when did the patches the main patches actually come out? Uh, I'm not too sure, but but mm. like for argument's sake, I was just saying what happened if that was the scenario. You know what I mean. Oh, the patch will drop on Saturday. That's cool. Well, imagine if it drops. Well, if it, well, I mean, if it dropped tomorrow, it'd be fantastic. But everyone's choices would just be all up in the air because now you'd have a lot more testing to do. You know what I mean? But for racing, for me, it's not so much about the new cars. It's more about your setups are just fucked. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I've literally got in cars that I set up and I had bona fide setups that I knew that like, yo this setup is rapid you know what I mean and it was dead you know what I mean I made like a great setup in the Lambo around Catalonia and um, we got the patch like a little bit before but I never went back to it and then when, when, when the time came for the race nowhere the setup was nowhere you know what I mean that setup was like golden that was like my best setup I've ever made for this game so far and then it just didn't even work anymore. It just pissed me right off. But it is what it is, man. Mm. It is what it is. But anyway, I think we're done. We made our decision. The Audi. We'll probably do another one once the new the new cars come out. And yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah. yeah. But we're going to sort of do this podcast fortnightly. I think it's a little bit easier to think of topics i don't want to like oversaturate as well because then we'll just be like different things every week and like, force ourselves to think of something you know what i mean so we'll do it fortnightly i don't know if i'm jumping on hive mind you getting on i don't know if i'm getting on yeah you know i'm mean? getting on come on getting friday on. Okay. yeah i've got practice to do <laughs> ah, <laughs> ah, ah. Yeah, yeah let me not slack off <laughs> practice time it's practice yeah. time you know what i mean i want to see you on shaggy dan you know what i mean wipe them cobwebs <laughs> off that wheel you know what I mean? Before you know it, <laughs> you're going to turn that wheel on. It's just going to be dust. You know what I mean? Yeah, you don't WD-40. need that. Yeah, WD-40. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah, man. I'm going to jump on a settle now. Uh, and I'll catch you guys, hopefully, in hive mind. Um, and if you're not from AOR, then I don't know what you're doing. You need to go and get yourself signed up. Anyway, I'll catch you guys in a bit. And peace.